It said wind and rain. It didn't say you may be killed in a savage tornado, but that's fine. Come on! The aftermath. I don't even know if this camera's working properly, mate. Wow, what a thing, eh? Thank you, Lord, thank you. I've been fishing on the continent for 35, would you believe it, 35 years. It seems hardly believable, doesn't it? I look that young. But anyway, it's true. And those formative trips we fished, uh, where did we go first? The first place I ever went on the continent was a small series of park lakes just outside Rotterdam in Holland. And like nowadays, you know, I almost exclusively travel on my own or with one friend, but always in small groups because nothing else works. Well, the very first time we went, I think there was about eight of us went together, absolutely as green as grass we were, like we'd just been hatched, but we had great fun. And, uh, and of course, once you start on that path, well, you never know where it's gonna lead you. Should have bought a 4x4 four mate. Four, That's why I've got a 4x4 four four, Joe. Should have bought yours. Yeah, we should have bought mine. We'd have been here hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> There's the old bridge of... Oh mate, that spot. I have caught some car from this spot over the years. It's a very difficult thing to do, that sort of style, the style of fishing that I like to indulge in on the continent. You're trying to do like what you'd achieve in a year here on a lake that you know very little about in a week, usually. Maybe 10 days, two weeks is a big trip. But you know, you're trying to condense everything into a very small period of time and that's not easy. That's not easy at all. Uh, made even more difficult, they say birds of a feather fly together. It was a saying my old mate Frank Warwick used to say to me all the time and it's very true, you know, you end up sort of coming together with people of a like mind and you pursue that sort of that, that style of fishing but there's very little longevity in that you know most people want to go for a lovely time a few beers a smoke a lay in the sun you know you can imagine proper holiday fishing and it's never really been holiday fishing for me it was back in the day you know when we very first started fishing the rivers and stuff it was holiday fishing you know um, but it very quickly turned into work for me. So for much of the last 25 years, all of my fishing abroad has had a work tinge to it. You know, I go, I go fishing. I like to just throw myself into something I've never seen before. But I always need to come back with some pictures and some something, you know, because ultimately it ends up getting used for work, even if it's been vlog stuff or just pictures, you know. Um, so. Fishing partners come and go because of the nature of the beast. Like I said, most people want to lay in the sun. I don't. I need to get some fish caught. Um, and I've realised, you know, I realised when, when I went this time, you know, how selfish I am. You know, I, my English fishing is work. It's always been work. So my European fishing is for me. So to have somebody tagging along filming me, you know, made me realise just how selfish I actually am because all I want to do is appease myself, you know, I want to do stuff that I want to do. Um, and when you've got someone saying, oh, well, hang on, Nick, can we just film that? Like, mm, I didn't take too well to it, as it probably shows at times. But, you know, also, I actually really enjoyed it. You know, I came back from that. I went with Joe from Thinking and we actually had a really good trip. It was up and it was down. Um, but the, mar you know, the, the mark of a man is that you can go on those sort of trips where it's not always rosy and it's not always fun but you come back and you still had a great time. I think we've hit the end of the road for this bit. Don't think that van is gonna get through that. Um, so reversing back up this track is gonna be interesting. Dave, this is where I fished. I used to fish it 20 years ago. And I'll never forget it because all night, like, we had freight trains crossing it. I never got a wink of sleep. They were so loud, you couldn't even in, even with your hands over your ears. Like It was like light, all the lights going across and that. Um, but it's deep off the back of this, this bridge and these pillars. And we turned up here once years ago and they were showing like at, out in front of the bridge. And I ended up fishing here and wanging out past the poles. And it was deep, 30 foot. And uh, I caught a couple of the real nice ones the first time I fished it. And then I came back a few times and caught them again. 
Um, but we can get over there on that bank and we can get down further along this bank. We just can't drive through anymore. It just goes to show in 20 years, a lot's changed. Yeah, and what's the plan? So find somewhere down here to bait up for the way home? Um, well, we came to look here. Uh, you know, you've got, you've got two rivers merging just upstream at the town. You've got the Yon and the Seine, both mega cart rivers over the years. And they both join into this bit. And then they go all the way down until they hit the first barrage. And often the bottom end of a stretch like this, especially such a long stretch where two lots of rivers come in, you just, you're, you're, you know, you're doubling the potential of there being fish about. And at the bottom end of the stretch, either at the start of the year or at the end of the year, they're always really good areas. And I know that between this bridge and the lock at the bottom, there's bites to be had. I just know it. Um, so we'll go round, have a little look. Um, if it looks like we can put some bait out, we will. We'll stick out five key. Um, we may not come back here, but this is the thing with short trips. You, you're edging your bets all the time. You've got an awful lot to think about. You've got seven nights. That's not a lot of time in the big sky. No, well, I'll tell you what I've got to think about now is how the f I'm going to get this fan Don't worry about that, back son. down this track. Don't now. worry about that, son. We'll soon sort that out. Not so sure, mate. Yeah, mate. Hold on. Well, he, he get yeah. <laughs> he got stuck. The boy said, we're going to send someone with you. You know, your vlogs are good. They're really popular. People like it because it is just what it is it's not dressed up to be anything else but you know it could be better you know send someone with me they can get some drone stuff a bit of second camera just make it more interesting for the viewers watching at home i'm all for that all i said was look i don't care who you send with me because i'm not prissy i'm not i'm not a diva in that respect don't care who you send with me they've got to be man they've got to be a man they've got to be manly enough to take it because a lot of people can't and they fold very quickly um i said but also like don't send me someone I've got a babysit. Yeah, well, I should have known, shouldn't I? I might as well have gone straight to mother care and bought the jumbo size nappies, because like, sure enough, they sent with me Joe from Thinking. Now, Joe's a lovely lad, a great bloke to fish with, and having fished with him through thick and thin for that trip, I can honestly say he's a great bloke, and he's got, he's got the mentality for that style of fishing, so I'll go with him anytime, anywhere in the world. I mean that, Joe, it was great. But, but, it's like he'd just been hatched out of an egg. Do you know what I mean? Clueless. Dint and big cup. Dint and dint and big cup. You know, they don't know what day of the week it is, bless them. So anyway, Joe was great, but Joe needed a couple of days to be... I didn't hold me punches with Joe. You know, I was a bit mean to him, but I was mean to him to try and toughen him up. You know, like like fatherly love, you know, like like an old school father. You know, you fall off your bike and he, he, tell, he like picks a bike up and shouts at you for damaging your bike, you know what I mean? Um, and it was a bit like that. But all in all, Fantastic. You need someone with you that can roll with it. And the sort of fishing I do isn't that nice. And like I said, I've, I learned from that trip just how selfish I am as a person and an angler. I want to do what I want to do and I'm not going to take anybody else's advice and I'm not going to be swayed and I'm not going to listen because that's just me. And Joe took it all on the chin day after day after day. It was wicked. <sighs> the joys. The joys. We got all the way down here. Can't get any further. River's gone in. So we've got to try and spin round. Joe was like, how am I going to spin the van round? Oh, we'll be all right, mate. That's it, Joe. Come on all the way round. Keep her coming. It's a company van, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. Oh, well, don't worry, mate. Just keep going back to you. It's saying. My senses are going nuts. <laughs> yeah, I bet they are. Keep coming. Keep coming. You've got loads of room. All good. That'll do, yeah, now come this way. <laughs> oh. Yeah, just keep going to your splash. Cheers, mate. You got miles, mate. So, yeah, through the old thing is the old big bridge. Typically, it's so overgrown these days, you can't see it. But we're on our way out to a... Uh, and this is the thing, <laughs> so many people wouldn't realise that when you do this sort of fishing, half your trip is driving around dead ends and then having to turn around and start again. Even smells half. Proper cool. Nice spot, mate, isn't it? It is, mate, yeah. Just straight off the river. Yeah, well, I used to dig them. They used to bring the barges straight in off the river. So rather than like in England where everything's lorried in and out, they use, the, they use it as an artery. They used to dig in off the river. And if you see, it goes through there into a big gravel pit out the back. Yeah. And then they would dig a lake 
And while they're digging the lake and removing all the gravel and the whatever they wanted, um, they'd be boating it straight back out into the river and off to be processed. And that's why this bit here is so rich with gravel pits. Yeah. Because it's obviously a gravel rich area and they literally dug them straight off the river. And it's left for the carp angler like a playground of unimaginable beauty and opportunity really. Like this is a good spot here, you got weed. Oh, look at that's that. That's good luck, you'll be catching one tonight. But like, you know, this is a good spot. Look, you got, look and see how rocky the margins are and stuff. It's just full of crayfish. There's weed. And there's so many of these spots, like you could literally lose a month just doing a night in each one. Um, and you just have to be a bit more, uh, you know, when we came here back in the day, we caught them from certain areas. So we kept fishing those certain areas, you know, but who's to say this bit ain't better. It's just how it is. You're, uh, you're fishing for very nomadic carp. Very exciting, tasty, mm. but not good for you. <laughs> not, not very good for you. Pretty much like everything that's tasty. Nothing. Yeah, nothing is good for you, is it? Let's be yeah. honest. It's been a long old drive, hasn't it? It's been a very long drive, mate. Yeah, taking about so we're about three hours south. Um, kept running into uh, lots of potholes. Um, so yeah, you couldn't actually get to where Nick wanted us to get to in that van. So uh, yeah, drive down another hour. Um, I think this is furthest south we're actually gonna go. So we're gonna do a night here. Um, and yeah, see how it goes. It's very weedy though, very, very weedy. First of all, <clears throat> munch up, munch it, munch it, because we are starving. Ank Marvin. Ank Marvin. And in France, son, look at that, cheese, salami, tomato, oh. I'm living the f***ing dream. But whacking a bit of coleslaw yeah, in there, Nick. Oh, mate, a bit of coleslaw and beer, and then I'm going to have a look at my spot. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna put this camera down and get myself on, mate. <laughs> Wrapping the hook baits. Very good, very nice. Very good, very nice. Joe's getting a couple of rods ready. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, oh yeah. And there's me. I'm here on the canal. Got a couple of rods out already. But what a nightmare getting them rods out. It is so weedy, this basin. Even though I've been told there's lots of big carp here, which you wouldn't imagine so looking at it, but. It's meant to have some absolute crackers. So we're gonna do a night and see how we get on. Look at him. He's fearless. Don't care about He's cool, isn't he? No. But do you know what he is? Obviously Nick does. Nick told me. I never had a clue. Um, but yeah. Have a little go, have a guess, leave it in the comments. Yeah, very cool. Many of them, do you, in the middle of a town? Well, koi pula, right in front of me, eating the old weed. That's a lovely evening. Joe's doing arty stuff. 
just uh, I'm drinking a Beaujolais. I've got some rods out, even though I had to get the little boat out to drop them because it is literally solid to the surface weed. I reckon I had a thousand drops of a lead before I got one to hit the bottom. Hmm. Someone's in trouble. Um, and when I did get one to hit the bottom, I didn't mess around. I just chucked bait over it and put it on the rest. So we're in the lap of the gods tonight, but hey. It's a mad place and apparently you can night fish here, no problem. The locals are all lovely, main road opposite you. Very unusual in France, really, really unusual. And meant to be some very big fish knocking about. That'd be wicked. like I do with all my fishing as I get older everything I look at with a with a very clear straight view you know and a, and a week to go to somewhere you've never been particularly really challenging waters you know big barrages or a wild bit of river that you have no real knowledge about other than the little bit of research you do and the pictures of the fish that you've seen that initially spark your interest it's a very difficult game you know, to go to a lake like, just for an example, a lake like St. Cassien, like a lovely lake, 2,000 acres, like for most English anglers, it's so far out of their point of reference, they have no idea. You know, you go out in a boat, you're 10 yards off a bank, you look back at the bank, and you're not even an underarm cast out yet, you're in 100 foot of water. That can be really challenging for most people, and rightly so, you know, you have to, you have to progress as an angler to do that sort of thing. But when you go there with a week, a week is all of a sudden a very, very short amount. It might take you a week to get on some fish, fishing a different part of the lake each day and looking in the evenings and the mornings and stuff like that. You know, a week isn't a long time in that sort of fishing. And that's it. Day one. Gonna stay here. I can't remember even if I updated anyone on what happened fishing wise, but uh, I know Nick's been doing a bit for his vlog, so. But yeah, we haven't actually eaten anything yet. Um, so we're gonna get some grub, get the beds out, get our head down, and uh, I'm gonna be up at first light because I reckon this, all of this, will look pretty good. Uh, morning campers. I put a couple out here, which was the only real drops in the middle, and one down there off where that bank kicks in, I had a rod down there which went this morning. Uh, just on first light, I was laying in bed, kept getting bleeps, loads of koi poo here. Um, hitting the lines all night, but it was bleeping, bleeping, and then it just one-toned. I went down there, rods bent right round. It was right down the end somewhere, like a massive weed on it. It hadn't gone far, but it snapped the hook off me rig. Oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, first morning in France at a bite. You have to be thankful of that, whether you land it or not, I guess. Joe was up there. There's Joe up there somewhere. Yeah, there's his rods. There's his bed. Yeah, it was a lovely night, apart from the uh, obligatory summer French techno rave going on. All good fun. One bite, no carp, off to somewhere new. The planning of this trip was um, was sort of key, really. I, I've been. I'm not much of a for fishing in midsummer in France. One, one because, as you know, like France is hugely diverse, I say it all the time. There's many different facets to France, um, but they can all be really, really savage when it comes to the weather. Especially sort of this time of year, you know, you, you're, you're looking at quite possibly 40 degree heat, savage mosquitoes. With 40 degree heat, depending on where you are in the country and your proximity to any big mountains, there's also the chance of really big weather as well, like total mad weather, the likes of which you can't imagine until you sat in it, as we found out this trip. Croissants, isn't it? One of the joys of fishing in France. You get up in the morning, have a little pack up before the sun gets too hot, straight to the Boulanga. Croissants in St. Laurent, isn't it? Now we're fortified with French food, we're going to go and have a little milk about. 
And uh, Joe has broken the law. I went for a, a, a Mandy. Almond tart, uh, almond thing, yeah. Yeah, oh, look at it. Oh, Amand, that's it. Amand. <laughs> It's really low, isn't it, Nick? What? Nick's quite excited about some bubbling, which is going. Oh, no, I've just been watching bubbling from a long way away. But I'm, I'm more excited about this, I'll be honest. Yeah, that, that's, that looks more like cod, doesn't it? But we'll see. Sorry, Nick, back to the fishing. It's all right, mate. No, it, w what we got is, like, obviously, we've had these mega temperatures, and this canal, this, these sections, by the look of it, are at least a couple of foot down, I would have said. Oh, there's one, right opposite us. There's one right there. Yeah. I've just seen the bubble in, they were car. We're getting rods out, so we're getting rods out. Come on! There you go, how's that for a touch? With the water so low, we were able to see some fish. We weren't sure whether they were carp because it literally is maybe a couple of foot deep at best. Anyway, we've plopped a couple of rods out left and right, and one of Joe's has just gone. We've only been here an hour or so, which is lovely times. Hopefully, it's a nice carp to show you. There you go, he's got it. Numero uno. Numero uno for Joe. And you can see, look behind him, just how low this canal is when you look at the far side and that. We reckon it's a good cut the foot down, a good cut the foot down. Anyway, lovely start. Nice 20 pounder for Joe. It looks like a 20 pounder, doesn't it, mate? Chipping away with a little bit of work. Managed to get a couple of rods down, just down from where Nick was fishing down there and uh, winkled the first one of the trip. It'll do. Go, first one of the trip for Joe. We just put the rods out. I went left, he went right. There was a bit, we'd seen stuff. We weren't sure whether they were carp because the water's so low, they could easily have been chubs or bream or something, but no, they're obviously carp. Oop. Uh -oh, what's that? Is that carp? No. Right, let's get down there quick. Packed up. Yeah, Where now? Uh, yeah, we're just, it's very, very low the water. There's no movement of boats between the locks. They've obviously, where we fished last night, they've held the water back a bit. Um, bloody seatbelt alarm. <laughs> they've held the water back into the little basin where the boats are. Um, but we know water movement, it's no surprise it's as weedy as it was. Um, and it's less weedy, but barely any water. Like the deepest spot you've got is probably thigh depth. Uh, Joe caught one, we've seen a few about, so it's obvious that you can get a bite here, it's just not much fun fishing for them when it's like this, so we're going for a mooch, we're going to go and get some cold beer, because it is really hot today, we're going to go and look at a lake down the road, about 20 minutes away, that's meant to have some really lovely carp in it, and um, yeah, we're going to check out the rest of this canal, like through the next stretch, and just uh, do a bit of plotting for tonight, you know, once we've had a little look around, we can make a decision, and once it cools off, we'll be back to have a go, wherever that may be. It's really important all the time and because again because of the I, I literally never know where I'm going to end up it could be on a little tiny canal in the middle of the country a huge reservoir exposed to the wind and the weather it could be on a bit of river or a barrage down south like I just don't know where I'm going to end up that is and a lot of people don't believe me when I say it but that is the truth that's how I get my buzz I get in the car where are you going Nick? I don't know for years I've been getting the tunnel and I'll see carp anglers, like I do try and avoid them, but normally they, they, they find me and it'd be like, oh, where are you going, Nick? And I'll be like, oh, I don't know, don't know yet. And they'd be, and people can't seem to fathom, it. what, you don't know where you're going? Well, no, part of the joy, part of the adventure is not knowing where you're going. You could end up anywhere and because you could end up anywhere, you need to have the kit to cover all eventualities. I can't stress that enough, um, which means you've never got, you're never traveling light. I'm never going, oh, I'm just going to go down to that canal for two or three nights and then maybe do this on the way home. I don't know where I could be. So I need towing kit, casting kit, boating kit. I need the full lot and I need the bait as well, just because I don't know what's coming. Well, here we are. After much driving about and looking and surmising. Looking good, Joe. It's mm, looking good. Smelling good too, mate. Lovely. We're on the River Yon. Oh, oh, getting took out by the weed. Great. 
Right, yeah, sorry, I just had to recast that. Got a lot of weed coming down. We got the old noddy boats on the river. Sure enough, we saw them come through the lock and they went round the wrong way over the shallows and tore up an absolute massive amount of weed which has been coming through constantly. Anyway, so yeah, I'm on the yon, the upper yon. I've never fished on the upper yon. Uh, fished where it used to meet the Seine and around that area a lot, a long time ago, but never above there, never above there. And yeah, it's a lovely bit of river. I've really, really enjoyed it. We had a drive about it a look. We liked the look of the bit further up, which had a couple of bridges. It was on a big bend, a load of shallows opposite. There was Xander striking and all that. It looked really, really good. Um, but it was right next to the freight train line and we both need some kips. <laughs> We've thrown that in and come down here. We've just come out of the little local town and we're, uh, we're going to have a nice quiet night here. Who knows what's here? If there's a carp about, God only knows. Says Nick, if there's a car about one's just jumped out dead opposite me. Okay. Yep. Off them snags over there, walloped out. See the big ripples coming back? Yeah. It's a long way away. We can't fish over that side of the river, yeah, it's all side, Yeah, but you can't you can't get there and you can't cast across to it because you can't keep a lead in the water long enough. <laughs> but anyway, the boat channel's looking good. We've put a few cod balls out. It is literally luck of the draw, but you never know your luck. That's the truth of it. So yeah, we're going to have a barbie, a couple of beers, get some good kip and get off early because we're headed towards Longras, which is up on a plateau and is expecting some better weather, like not hot and it's actually getting really good down to mid-20s with big thunderstorms and rain and with that will come some wind no doubt, so it looks like a couple of days of big lake weather. So we're going to head that way and have a good scout about, so I'll see you tomorrow morning um, and yeah, off on another leg of the adventure. Good morning gang, we'll just put the rods back out. I don't think we can see the barrage from here, but we're about, I would say half a mile above a big barrage on the River Yon. It's a lovely morning, but you can see all them snags and weed on the far side. A lovely olden area, but of course, oh, we couldn't fish across because of the uh, Thanks to our friends in the Noddy boat over there that tore up all the weed. It's been absolutely ridiculous. Huge floating weed beds. So of course I reeled in last night, which is a shame really, because this morning and well, through the night and this morning, we've seen quite a few carp, mainly on, well, all on the other side. I had one last night to my left, but way down towards the barrage. <clears throat> so anyway, a lovely night we had, nice barbecue and a few bottles of cold beer and actually had a really enjoyable evening. I put them out this morning, I had to take off something straight away, slow take, but it was, it was like a turtle or something, really weird bite. Anyway, we're gonna fold this lot up, and jump in the van of doom. Oh, and head off. Oh, it's a nice spot here, I could easily stay here for a few days, mate, I love it. Well. Off again. That was a very pleasant night. Oh, this carp just jumped out there, look. Big old splosh. Yeah, I'm definitely coming. Yeah, there's definitely a few about down here. I'll be coming back for a go. Look at that, it's a hell of a spot. Beautiful. So you find these things by chance, and that's the beauty of this style of fishing. Like, no, no night is ever wasted. We had a lovely night last night, and I've got, now got another spot to put in the old book to come back to when I'm in the area. Brilliant. Oh, Mr. I'll give you the key of tractors. Alright, Joe. How's it going, mate? <laughs> Fancy doing a night here? Seems alright here. Do you want me to put in there? French music, mate. Good luck, sir. Second tank of the trip. Early days, son, early days. Good job you're paying, innit? <laughs> Me trying to be funny, making out as if Nick would have to pay. Seems like our fuel card doesn't work out here, so uh, that one bit me in the bum, didn't it? Because guess who had to pay? Joey. 
Joey paid. Nick's got me driving up footpaths. Got to, you got to explore every track, Joe. Oh, this is not a track, Nick. I drive an estate car. I've always driven estate cars. I know I should have a big, spacious van, but I just like I like to travel at Mach 10 whenever possible because part of the you know when you've got a week and this cannot be understated. If you're driving a thousand miles or you end up driving a thousand miles, the very last thing you want to be doing is taking two days to cover huge distances. Like I haven't got the time. I can't afford the time for that. So everything goes in an estate car. Now that's a bit of a double-edged sword. I can get a month's worth of fishing kit in an estate car, but what it means is, especially for an angler like, like myself who, who will stop down there on a bit of canal, oh, this looks good, I'll have a night here and a barbecue and a glass of wine, and then tomorrow we'll have, go and have a look at that river down there, and tonight I'll look at a few lakes on the map and decide where I want to go and check out next. You don't know. But the thing is with it, everything has to come out and everything has to go back in again. So going in a van, apart from the fact that vans are really uncomfortable to sit in for long journeys, um, they are really cool because you're higher up and I get to see stuff I've never seen before being low down in the estate car. If it was two of us in the estate car, it would have been a huge issue. But like a big van where you can just chuck the kit in and out, actually it was lovely, it was much easier. Well, here we are at the first resi. Water's low like you'd expect after such a megaly hot summer. But it's lovely times look. Got the old bus right in the swim. <laughs> How's your luck? We're probably going to do the night here I think. It's lovely. Quiet, no trains. No anglers really, just those couple of Germans around the corner, but we'll, uh, Joe's got to have a chat, so we'll soon find out what's going on. But the Dutch fished here last night, in fact they fished down there a little bit to the left, and they reckon they saw loads, but they didn't catch none. But you know, one night's one night, and it you need a couple of days to start to get things going on this sort of place, but we'll see, we may be here, and when, I, when you see me next, we'll either be setting up, or we'll be going uh, to one of the other resis, but... We've got a bit of shopping. It's always a rush on a Sunday, isn't it? Like Sunday morning, the shop's shut at 12 and we've left the, the river we were on and we've a couple of hours drive to get here and whatnot and then desperately trying to run about to find a tobacconist and a supermarket to get a bit of food for tonight. But we've done it with minutes to spare. I think the shop's shut at half 12. The rest of them are already shut. So we've got a few, uh, we've got a few goodies. We've got a couple of bottles of wine. We've got some shade, we've got a big empty lake in front of us. I reckon we're going to give it a go, but we'll see what Joe comes back and says. I'd made a planned a loop to go with Joe, which is like, I never used to have a planned loop, but seeing as we only had a week, we're filming vlog stuff, I, you know, I had to think a little bit logistically, I had to think, right, well, we'll work our way down there, we'll look at that, if that's no good, we'll end up there, if that's no good, we'll end up there, and if that's no good, we'll drive across the resis and have a look there on the off chance they might be quieter. Um, the reason that I wanted to head to the resis so much, one, because I was convinced my plan was going to come good, that, you know, the crossover period at the end of the holidays would mean they were quiet. But also, at, the, at that time, we've had some weird weather this year, and at that time it was brutally hot in France, like brutally hot. Most days in the 30s, low to mid 30s, we went to the canal first. The canal was almost dry. It had been so hot through the middle of France. Um, the water level was so low, we found fish instantly, they were super scary, super spooky and we, you know, and it didn't feel right fishing for them. So we decided to carry on our mission towards the reservoirs. And all the time I'm looking at the weather, the weather is my bible. Because it can be, this is the thing about France that most people don't seem to understand. I don't know why they don't understand it. It's no different to England. If I go to Scotland today, it's not going to be the same as it is, that, well it might be at the moment because it's bloody freezing. But most of the time there's a vast difference in temperatures, day and nighttime temperatures, and the weather. Now, for much of Europe, it was just, I was looking at the map, it was just red. Hot, 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 hot. Very little in the way of wind, super hot, quite literally the worst reservoir conditions possible. Big reservoirs respond to big weather. Big weather is just like a switch. It can be like there's not a carp in there for weeks. You get a little bit of wind and a bit of rain and like every rod's going every minute. Like that's just how it is. They need, they need something to spur them on. And the weather was looking good. You know, I'd been, you know, I kept saying to Joe, mm, you know, Wednesday, like we're, we're, we're sat 35, 37, 39. I'm thinking, oh God, it was brutal, oppressive heat, soul crushing heat. 
like I'm a fair skinned bloke from England. <laughs> I've been doing it a long time and I still suffer in that sort of heat. But the reservoirs, certainly up around the, the, and this is the other aspect to it, those reservoirs that I'm talking about, they are all positioned around what is called the Longres Plateau, which is a very high point in the centre of France. Now in the winter, that means that area is usually much colder than the surrounding areas, but also in the summer because of its height and its proximity to the Alps of east of that, uh, to the east of it, like there's every chance that the weather can also be a little bit up and down. You know, when everywhere else is super hot, you can actually have a bit of weather there. And that's exactly what happened on this trip. It was like a playbook, like reading the playbook before you went and it played out in front of every page. Oh yeah, yeah, wicked is. And that's how it went. It was just one of them trips where it was right. I kept looking, it said wind and rain. It didn't say you may be killed in a savage tornado, but that's fine. Like, you don't know until it happens, do you? And if you don't know it's gonna to happen to you, you can't be worried about it. So I kept saying, right, Joe, we're going to these resis. It's looking, it's looking good, mate. We've got a couple of days of sitting around, like, but the weather is coming. If we can just get ourselves in a good plot, like, there's gonna be a bit of wind and rain turn up, and, you know, there's a good chance we'll be able to nick a bite. Like, I fancy me chances of nicking a bite. Nick's just been out there. We've got the boat out, obviously, and uh, yeah, he's gone out there, had a little look at the depths and still getting about five foot at about 400 meters out. So what he's decided is, so there's a swim over in the far corner, which is empty currently. So he is going to quickly boat across. Let me flip this back round. But yeah, there he is. So he's going to quickly boat across over to that far corner. I'm going to chuck everything back in the van quick and I'm going to meet him around there. So I'm just quickly scooting around. Despite those German lads seeing fish out there, there's meant to be some, uh, it keeps changing, but there's meant to be some pretty big weather coming in. Um, so we kind of want to be in position for that really. And uh, you imagine, it's all pumping into that swim as well. So you imagine the fish that are there now, when that weather comes in, are probably going to back off, you'd like to think, into that deep water. So yeah, I think Nick's got it right. Time will tell. That camera's ended up all over the place. Woo, can you still see me? Very quick dash. It was all stations go for a minute, but the swim has been secured. Nick's tying up a couple of rigs. You got? I've got a big curve shank. I've got a uh, cam soft straight through. Tied, I don't know, 14 or 15 times up the shank. And uh, with a big cod ball and a bit of a uh, and a bit of a, a big bit of rubber maze as the boilie stop that I fold the big loop round so nothing can pull it off because you're not fishing in England, remember? If you leave normal rigs out there, you've got a proper, you've got a proper, proper nice lump of lead, lead clip, thick leader. What sort of ranges are we going to be fishing or? Um, I'm, this, you know, this side of the lake is, you know, I went out off that far side. Look at the water dripping off me, mate. It's red so hot. It? Um, I went out probably three or four hundred yards. It was four foot. I was clumping the the engine on the bottom at, at bloody nearly two hundred yards. Uh, but this side, you know, it, go, it drops down pretty quickly to ten foot. The bottom's harder. Um, it, even though the wind is due to go where we were going to set up originally, it's so shallow out there. There was two Germans to the right who were fishing out this side of the marker they're probably in the deeper water whereas we would have been in five foot if, if you'd have gone extra and far you might have got a six foot rod but it's soft and <laughs> whereas out here's a different kettle of fish we command a huge piece of water no one can yeah. fish all that dam so no basically we've got half the lake and that to me says well we might as well give it a go for 48 hours i was very excited about uh mine and nick's little uh trip to europe but a little bit worried as well because obviously I haven't got loads of experience when it comes to uh, filming and when you've got someone like Nick who's a bit of a free spirit and you're trying to put the handbrake on him, it's not always ideal. Nick just wants to go, I need to get him to stop. So my concerns were, uh, were, were spot on because uh, he was an absolute pain in the ass. All right, his first one's done. If I can get him to slow down in a bit, I'll actually uh, get him to show us the rig properly. <laughs> See you in a bit, Joey. In a bit, mate. I'm going to go out roughly to the uh, 
All right, mate. Put the old uh, party blend. Soaking up, cooking. In the blistering sun, because it is absolutely under, yeah. I need to come better prepared next time, I think. Problem is you can't even uh, risk just running down here without any shoes on because there's loads of broken glass in this, so, uh, yeah, that would not be smart. This is a new and strange environment at first, suddenly finding yourself in orbit. percent I better um, make that the only one for today might have to reposition my chair in a minute the old sun's uh, starting to bear down a bit speaking of which I best go assist you cannot use hair stops on these lakes that are full of poisson shat and crayfish so I copied a thing that old my old mate Kerry Barringer was the way he used to put his boilies on the hair without hair stops many years ago with a nylon hair. Yeah, it was just to fold is. it around, make a long enough loop that it will fold around the bottom bait. There you go. Nothing's moving that in a so million years. So put that, bring that back, Ray. If anything, I've tied it a bit short, but I'll jig it a bit. I'd like a bit more yeah, separation between yeah, the hook yeah. and the... There you go. Let's take a breather time. We've got one rod out. Now it's time to smash the glam. Right. To be fair to Nick, he's taking a breather for a very good reason, and that is because it is proper hot. And it's not a quick thing getting one of those rods out, so. Especially when he's uh, on about putting one of them out to. Uh, Hmm, let's see if I can zoom in. Let's see on this screen. I can't see much. Yeah, out. Just short of those guys. That's a long way. Uh, something's obviously quite funny on the ground. Go on, what was that? It's, right, it's just the sun, mate. It's getting to you. Just the sun getting to you. I just sent me, mate, a picture of the massive weed field. <laughs> I'm sat in the bivvy, hiding from the brutal heat. But Joe, bless him, he's got work to do. So he's like, we're gonna. I've got this tarpaulin, which is a brilliant bit of kit for bringing on these sort of trips. Whether it's pissing with rain, you want to cover your stuff up, or red hot, and you need to set up some shade. Somehow, God knows only how two idiots on tour, I managed to forget all or most of my long bank sticks, um, which is a massive error on these sort of trips. But Joe's been off doing a bit of hunter gathering and gotten us some some uh, some poles. So in a minute, hopefully, we're going to have a nice shady swim. That high enough, shouldn't it? Yeah, easy. But it's so hot here, we can't even tell you. I haven't burnt to a crisp, and I've only been out and done one rod. It's brutal here, but we are high on a plateau, and it does seem the sun's a bit strong here. But tomorrow and the next day, it's cooling considerably, like five or eight degrees and rain and stuff. So let's hope there's a pool in it. We're in a good spot. We've got a lot of water. There's every chance. The carp in these reservoirs around the Longer Plateau, they've been there for a long time. Now, if they lived in a gravel pit, they would have been dead many, many years ago because it's a harsher, harder environment. They live in a muddy spoon. Like, they can't damage themselves even if they try to. So they can stay in incredible condition for their age. And a lot of those carp in those reservoirs are really, really old hark back to the original carp in France that I always like admired and wanted to fish for. Now, the trouble with these reservoirs is they are the preserve of the German and Dutch angler. They love them. They love them because it's safe. They love them because they have got big, nice, legal night banks. Um, but moreover, they love them because of the great fishing they offer. Now, the fact that they are so popular has always been a massive thing for me. 
I call in every year and check out several of those reservoirs in that chain. Because of where they're situated in mid-ish France, I'm either on the way through passing to somewhere else or on my way back from somewhere heading home. So I always call in on the off chance that they'll be quiet. And it's, you know, in the modern world, increasingly so, that's just folly, you know. I've been, I reckon I've called in at those reservoirs probably three times a year over the last two and a half decades. I've never once got the kit out of the car before. But there was a plan. Like, I might look stupid, but I'm not that stupid. The plan was that these days, the French, the Germans, the Dutch, in fact, all the Europeans pretty much have the whole of August off as their holidays. This is how it goes now in these countries. Like, So, and I did have a plan in my head at all times, I thought, if we just headed there right at the end of August, so when they should all be going home to go back to work, there should be a crossover period, shouldn't there? Where all of the main holiday makers have gone home and there should be a bit of a lull before the next band of the autumn anglers start to arrive. I worked on that premise and luckily for us, it paid off. I've been to Europe uh, a couple of times prior to this trip with Nick. I'm very green in, in that sense. Not having an idea of where we were going it, it, and sort of leaving it sort of open. We, we had a little bit of a plan. Nick had sort of a Nick plan, which is very loose. But it was, yeah, it was pretty much, we're going to roll with it for the most part. Uh, it was going to be a bit of an adventure and that really excited me. I guess the main thing is for me, or was for me, was that I'm not the most organised of people and I really didn't want to nick off, so I made sure I had everything where it needed to be. It weighs an absolute tonne of all this shit on the bottom. Yeah. Nick's not messing about. There were some guys opposite. Um, oh. But they packed up and went this morning, um, which means Nick can now go a little bit further out into the deeper water. Um, yeah, but he's actually reeling himself down to the rig. Saving the old power on the battery. Broken, mate. Captain's log. I've got nothing left to give. If you find this, just tell my family I love them. And I tried. All right. <laughs> no. There's another scorching, blistering day. Oh, it certainly knocked it out of you. Poor old Joe has just broken. <laughs> he nearly gave up this morning, bless him. Mm. Anyway, you know, we made this move based on big weather incoming. You know, big reservoirs require big weather. There's not a lot of top topographical variation out there. And the fish really do usually need a nice wind or a decent bit of, you know, 
nice bit of low pressure or something coming through to make them have a little feed. That's quite clear because we didn't catch any last night. And I had my rods well spread at mega range, like all the way down the middle of the reservoir really. And I'm putting my other rod out tonight, so I'll have four out tonight, so no excuses. Um, but yeah, I reckon, based on everything I saw this morning, it'll be another quiet night. But mid-morning tomorrow, I've got a couple of mates from England popping in just to say hello. They're on their way south a bit further. So they're going to pop in for a cup of tea and that in the morning. And then um, about, 11, I think mid-morning, 11-ish, something like that, the rain starts. And it's meant to rain all day. Oh my God, that'd be a blessing, wouldn't it? Like, I'll be sat here then, like, buzzing, you know, <laughs> buzzing, expecting something to happen. But yeah, let's hope so. There were a couple of occasions sort of early on when we got in the reservoir where Nick asked me to sort of guide him in and out. And uh, obviously because it's not something I've done, I didn't really know what he was going on about. So I'm trying to guide him. Then he's not listening. So yeah, eventually I just took shade under a tree, drank some nice cold water and beer. You look a bit broken, mate. Mate, I'm not broken. I'm just hot. I need a cold drink well, badly. Uh, so We've got nice chunks of ice. Right, well then, uh, We've got six big bottles of water. We need to re for later. reclaim the uh, cool box. I've got one little surprise one. What? Have you got some girls? No. Uh, uh, Two out of the fridge. Oh, that looks a bit f***ing. Oh, can't. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the ones. That's cold, what I mean, out of the fridge. Cold. Oh, God bless you, Joseph. Oh. You're not all bad. See, he was, yeah, call he was calling me. He was calling me absolutely useless earlier. Oh, I stand by that. Uh, absolutely <laughs> useless. It's taken about six. About it's taken about six hours <laughs> to get rods in position to then get them wiped out one by a little pedalo thing, <laughs> and then one, and then one. No, no, no. Well, look, no. Nick no, doesn't want to say it. Come no, on, what I happened got, to the I, other one, I, mate? I'll tell you why I propped my lines when I got three rods twenty foot apart, four hundred yards. Is because I've got absolutely no. F help like when you fish with normal anglers you look back and they're arming you this sat in his brolly smoking that's whoa now that's that's a bit unfair well, that's that's sounds like hurt. sounds like he's a bit sore there smoking no, i had smoking fingers on my laptop yeah right that's what we tell the bosses oh. don't smoke it's bad for you so so's drinking well, it's a funny old game cart fishing isn't it one minute I was sitting there, pretty dejected. Joe got took out by a boat. <laughs> and I've got like eight strand buoyant braid on for fishing other, these are like muddy spoons. You don't need the braid and you certainly don't need floating braid. Anyway, I, I fish mine really mega tight, like mega tight down to a really heavy captive back lead and real tight in the clip. And you know, if you get anything, a bleep, anything, it's a bite, especially at range. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sat here, I've got a bleep. I'm mega, mega distance out. I've gone down, looked at it, tightened it up. It was ping tight anyway, but I pulled it real tight. And then a couple of minutes later, another bleep anyway, there's one on the end, didn't there? And there you go. Joe's just gone up the shop, missed it, so he didn't get to film it. And uh, there it is. The result of quite a lot of tedious hard work in mm, very poor conditions for this sort of water. But anyway, we got one. <laughs> That's the main thing, 20 pounder by the look of it. Um, I'll get him out in a minute, lovely times. And double bonus, <sighs> Joe has bought us ice cold Heineken. It's as if the carp gods looked down upon us suffering and thought, ah, oh, let's give these boys a break. Lovely. See, I am the epitome of style and grace. Reservoir carping leaves you looking like a tramp at the best of times, or usually a muddy tramp. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a nice one. What a touch, eh? I said to Joe this morning, I was looking at these conditions, I was like, mate, I've done a lot of reservoir fishing. If we managed to get one, it would be by a complete fluke. Well, sure enough, we fluked one. <laughs> He's very angry and I can't say I blame him. Just been dragged 400 yards from where I've hooked him. Could you imagine doing this all week long? You think back to them shantycock days and they were catching 100 in a week <laughs> when the water was low. <laughs> oh, mate, this is hard work. Don't oh, out. No. 
I've done it before, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's a 30 pounder, Joe. Easy. Woo. Oh, he's a lovely one, look at that. <sighs> lovely reservoir carp. <sighs> he's all right, isn't he? His old tail, look. <sighs> He'll do, mate. He'll do. Like all French carp, he's an handful. <sighs> But a perfect start, eh? <laughs> like I said, a bit of a fluke considering the conditions. But to be fair, uh, the, re the result and, and the reward really for a fair bit of hard work, it looks very easy, but you know, everything takes so long when you're towing mega ranges and it's super hot like it was today. And yes, it actually is a little bit cooler today than yesterday. Yesterday was so brutal, I've never felt so wiped out. But yeah, mate, Ooh, a nice old carp. Oh, caught at a very odd time of day. <laughs> but a very welcome carp nonetheless. He'll do, eh? Let's hope he's the first of a few more and not the, not the first and last. <laughs> the French are very proactive, as are most of the European countries. They stock their fish pretty regularly. Now those reservoirs, for whatever reason, were stocked quite heavily in the early days and they don't really seem to get much in the way of stocking, or they certainly haven't done in the last decade or so. So you've got a bit of a unique situation there. You've got some, some actually really old carp for France. You know, when you know, you talk in England, you, a fish of 30, 40 years old, like that's not as that's not what I would class as an old carp, you know, a 60 or 70 year old carp is an antique carp, the sort of highly desirable creatures. Um, and a lot of those reservoir carp are in that 40 year bracket. Um, they started to look old, even though they're in a very soft environment, which has nurtured them and for many years enabled them to live their lives pretty much undamaged, apart from angler damage, you know, being in sacks, the odd broken tail and stuff. Um, and obviously capture damage around the mouth. But even that's quite slight because a lot of those fish simply don't get caught a lot. Um, they're under immense pressure for much of the year and you know like English carp you know when you look at pressure and how it affects the fish there's certain fish that don't seem affected by pressure they get caught a lot more than the other ones but a lot of these big old reservoir carp they go uncaught for years and years and years but the truth is they're still there they're still in these lakes like there isn't just one or two of them there's quite a few of them in all of these reservoirs but it's prohibitively busy for me for much of the time so Gambling on going there at the end of August in that crossover period um, actually paid off for us. You know, we got there and to find them all completely empty. And, and like when you when they're all empty, the world's your oyster, isn't it? You know, you've got your opportunity to have a go for a few of these fish. And I was buzzing to have a chuck, you know, without a doubt. All going on. Oh ho ho. <laughs> you luck, eh? How bizarre, mate. Coming straight at me, it's definitely a car. This one did the same thing. Like it's like there's nothing on the end. This is just what the last one was like, I was thinking. Tench, roach. But look at the spool, you know, I'm at... Huh. Don't know what I'm at, 3... 350, something in that range. And you saw the take, that just levered off, rod over, tight line. And now it's coming straight at me really quick. <laughs> Woo! Stupid carp, did no one tell them that the weather's like ridiculous? Look, it's doing it again, look, it's coming straight at you. Just wind and wind and wind and wind. That's it mate, keep coming towards me. Imagine if they like pulled really hard out there and wouldn't come in. This is ridiculous, look, I'm just winding it in. The tip's not even bent. I was just holding that fish, me and Joe looked at each other. I could hear, wee. I was thinking, 
Can't be a bite, surely, sure it was. Jeez, it goes from like the easiest thing in the world to reel in to like giganticus. <sighs> Need to get out of this sun, mate, before I actually cook myself to death. That'll cool me down, bae. I'm like a wild man, look at me. Yeah, you keep laughing. Yeah, laugh it up. Laugh it up, fat boy. <laughs> oh, mate, that's so much nicer. Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, oh, yeah, baby. Ah. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I prefer money, but water will do. Here he comes. Oh yes, my boy. Oof. <laughs> well done, Joe. <laughs> you put the net on properly. You <laughs> now I've got two booties, you Joey. Wicked, mate. Nice one. Number two in the out of nowhere from depression and too hot and like boats and people. Now we've got a couple. There you go. Nice little, nice reservoir common. He's actually a lovely one, isn't he? He's had no chance to rest up, so we're not gonna uh, see him in his best light. <sighs> oh man, <clears throat> brutally hot here. I don't know about so much a fluke, that last mirror, the mirror 30 pounder, real nice one. Um, but I just caught another one. So, uh, both on, um, Basically yesterday I started out with tigers, peanuts, hemp, that sort of palaver, and got took out straight away by roach and was getting pulls on the hook baits, lead shook off at, last thing you want is a lead shook off at 400 yards, I can promise you. Um, and yeah, so I chopped it all out, stopped 20, I just put 24 millers, janked in a cloudy krill liquid which gives them a nice stinky smell. Anyway, that's enough. Like, you know, I don't know, five or six good handfuls, a kilo of boilies around each rod. And uh, both the rods with 24s spread liberally around them have gone within an hour of each other. So yeah, despite the brutally vile temperatures, um, we're holding out in hope that this weather's coming tomorrow and it's gonna be a bit cooler and a bit wetter. And, uh, and the fish should feed a bit harder, hopefully. But yeah, great to be off the, off the mark because it's been testing the last couple of days with the heat. Um, yeah, brilliant. A couple of carp under me belt, lovely times. On the outside looking in, I think you could almost be forgiven for thinking that Nick's possibly a little bit blase, lazy, almost. But that couldn't be further from the truth. He's got like an intuitive nature when it comes to angling, like whether that's come from t the, the amount of time that he's done it and, and the experience or what, or, or maybe it might just be, be a natural, a natural uh, gift almost. But couple that with the effort that, that he puts in and I'm not sure if I probably gave, probably done it justice in terms of what, what, what I was filming sort of uh, behind the scenes almost, but it's second to none like most people in that situation, especially on that on that reservoir when it was so hot, there's no way in the world I'd have, I'd have redone my rods. I'd have just sat up in the shade, drank a beer, chilled out, relaxed. But he would not stop. It was relentless, and uh, yeah, I just think it that sums up Nick pretty much. Relentless. It is absolutely boiling right now. So uh, yeah, fair play to him for. Uh, <clears throat> getting back out there because that is a long way and it is really warm like a desert Ugh. Ugh. but yeah like I say fair play I'm supposed to be standing out here directing him 
to this bank stick, but I think I might pass out by the time it gets back. But then if I don't do it and I go sit in some shade, then uh, I'm gonna be in trouble. Don't know what to do. Shade. That's better. Shade. Not only uh, was I green to the to that sort of style of fishing, but um, I'm very new to the uh, to the filming as well. Um, I literally got a brand new camera the day before we went. All I kind of needed from Nick was a little bit of patience, but unfortunately, uh, he doesn't have a great deal. Here he goes again. Got to be careful he doesn't see me because he actually said no more filming him. So uh, he's hot. He's bothered. Here's Nick Kelly. <laughs> Brilliant. Just fair play. Well, you've been at it all day. It is absolutely hell. This ain't, you know, it, it's that sort of fishing you're, I mean, you're realising already. Like, you don't like, you don't catch yeah. Just look at what you've got to do. So, like, so nobody wants to have to work their bollocks off in 30 degrees in the mud and burning. And, but, like, as soon as you get a couple of bites, if you don't keep it going, that'll be it. So I'm sure the people who are watching it would rather see me catch a few than just one and get and lay in the shade. That's not what I'm doing, by the way. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> long way dude. It, it, that, was a, that is a proper long way mate. Yeah, 400 yards easy. But like as soon as you get out there it's completely different like you start seeing loads of life on the bottom. I'm not sure they're carp, they move a bit, you know carp usually gone before you get over them. Nothing quite says France like a baguette on a box of uh, them little uh, French bad boys. You went. And baguette filler. Nick did shout at me quite a lot, but I know there was no malice in it and you're, you're tired. And to be fair to Nick, he puts in an unbelievable amount of effort. I think most people would have just left the rods off the rest and been like, I'll deal with that later when it cools down or, or whatever it might be. But he could not rest until those rods were in place. So yeah, when he was having a moan up and he was, uh, was bitching, I, I, I knew for the most part he didn't mean it. Out of 10? Two. A two? Yeah, it is butter. You have to butter your bread before you put your sausage beans in. Well, why didn't we get the butter then? Because I'm too to walk anywhere. He's away. Jeez, you don't want to be catching him in this heat, do you? No chance. Save me again, but it's coming straight towards me. Right, I'm going to need you to... Um... Oh, I saw it, this one. I need you to go and get me my waders, mate, so I can oh, get mate. out to it. Pop this down then, I'll get through uh... that. Two seconds. I can't even actually see anything. My glasses are so steamed up and I've got so much sweat running in my eyes. I literally can't, it's like looking for a frosted up window. God, it's a powerful old carp, this. Every inch of the way, it's been like a lead weight. God, 
Oh, what a powerful thing. I'm going to have to go in the boat, mate. It's going to get near your other line. Nice carp, isn't he? No wonder he was strong. It's been a hot and long day. <laughs> but three carp has made it a bit more bearable. Out of nothing, fought a fluke one, then got another one, and then another one to end the day on. Lovely times. I tell you what, we deserve a barbecue and an early night because it's a joke and a test to the fact that today has been non stop graft. Thank you very much. Wicked. Whew. Too hot for me, Jack. Finally, looks like the weather's starting to change. I could see loads of uh, loads of uh, lightning last night on the horizon. Boom. Oh, not you. Where's the other one? Oh. Boom. Two real nice ones. One that we've come here for, you know. I talked about these magic old fish in this reservoir and the other ones round here. Anyway, I've got a couple of them to show you. My morning gang, I might look like I've been dragged for an edge back, for back, but I can't even speak, you see, I've been so tired. It was so hot, we've had so much heat, and now, thank God, the weather's come like it was predicted. We had a mega day yesterday. Four bites, four carp, like yesterday. Um, the last one yesterday evening was a real special one. I've been waxing lyrical about these reservoir carp, how magnificent and old they are, and the massive mouths, big long things, and I've got one to show you, I can't believe it. Like, absolutely, I wound him in from like 350 yards, like as if there was nothing there. And then right at the last second, like several of them have been, like, ooh, he's on the end. And I knew straight away it was a big and like big, powerful fish. Like, anyway, I landed it. Wow, you know. <laughs> uh, uh. Sometimes I can't talk, and it's not surprising. Like, I'm absolutely knackered, but I'm also elated because, like, we came here to do not the impossible, but a difficult task to come to these waters and catch them to order. Uh, and we've done it, and like, we've got a real nice one. And then <laughs> to cap it all off, just before like this morning, I got another real nice one, chalk and cheese, long and, and, and broad and, th and thick and short and deep and wide, like just perfect. What a thing, eh? What a thing. You've got to be happy with one of them. I know I am. Look at his great big cod mouth. All the better for eating giant cod balls. <laughs> Wicked. Mate, it's fish like this that keep me coming back time and time again, year in, year out. The expense, the aggro, the carp anglers at every turn. Like, what an amazing thing, eh? Magnificent. You are a magnif magnificent carp. Great big monster reservoir carp.
Oh, magnificent, eh? What an incredible morning. Oh, we haven't weighed it, it don't matter. This is what we came for. They look like these are just the most special things. So it's really, really lovely to catch one. The weight would just ruin it, wouldn't it? As soon as you start putting numbers on things. Oh my God, what a, fee. What a creature, eh? Absolutely blown away with that. What a cracker, eh? Oh, a beautiful thing. All right? Lovely. That's the one, mate. That was the kitty. Oh, why are you so heavy? He's been eating lead, four ounce leads off the bottom, I reckon. Oh, you beast. How thick set he is, he's cracking, isn't he? Thick wrist, little tail. A proper champagne reservoir carp. You can't ask for more than that. What an amazing thing, eh? Chalk and cheese from that giant long beast. But I'm just as happy with him. Another blistering day. Um, it's been absolute carnage this morning, last night. I've not done a, an update on this for um, a little while, but there's been good reason for that, and that's because it uh, kicked off. So um, yeah, a busy, busy evening and a busy morning. But um, yeah, and another proper hot one. And Nick spending what's well, what's looking like all day out in this boat because uh, yeah, he's been back and forth so far. Bleeps mean bites usually. Let's have a little look and see what's going on here. Yeah, it's gone slack. So I pick this one up. fight of death like literally the slowest heaviest most ponderous head shaking monster ancient lovely super it wasn't a long week to me you know, a week's fishing is never long. Um, it might have been long for Joe, who was like, to be fair to him, thrown in at the deep end, like, you know, to go fishing with me, like, I'm setting my ways, I am angry most of the time, and I'm also determined, fiercely determined to get the job done, because that's all I know, it's, it, it's all I've ever done. Like, you know, they know they can count on me to get the job done. So I go with the intention of catching a few fish, not to go with the intention of just having a lovely time, coming back with some footage and just saying, oh, we had a lovely time, we drank beer and caught nothing. That's, that's not in the remit. So for Joe, it must have been really, I, I totally accept that it must have been really difficult. One, trying to film me because I'm on autopilot. Jan Porter once said about me, my old mate Jan Porter, bless him, long gone. He said, uh, everything you do is instinctive. You don't even know why you're doing it. And, and I totally get that. Like, I am on autopilot. I've done the same thing for so many years. I turn up, the rods are out before you've got two, and a lot of the time, everything's done before you even have a chance to enjoy it. I don't get, often get a chance to enjoy it myself. Like, it just, that's how it plays out. Well, we've been waiting for this weather to come in. As you can see, something's changing. The heat is so oppressive, it's sickening. Luckily, Joe couldn't get any ice from the supermarket, but he managed to cut the cold cronies. And that's the next best thing in it. So anyway, while he was away, he had a bite. Luckily, he turned up just as he got back, but sadly lost it to a cut off. And now this one's away. Hottest time of the day. But we'll forecast rain in the next few hours. And then it's going to really kick off, I think. <laughs> but honestly, I've had me feel. I'm going to fish the day out and have the night off, I think. 
and tomorrow we're off to somewhere new for a nice change of scenery and a fresh challenge. <sighs> Lovely. <sighs> Shake the sweat out of my eyes again. But I can feel it is getting a little fresher in it. Like that rain is fast approaching and the, and the breeze is starting to like have a little bit of coolness into it. Up to this point, it's been stifling. But anyway, what we got here? We got a lovely mirror carp. I can't say I blame him, but there you go. Mid afternoon visitor, another lovely one. They're all lovely ones, aren't they? But the rain's definitely coming. And I reckon there's a few more of these to be had if we can keep rubbing them out there. He's a lovely one, isn't he? Beauty, happy days. Always look for the biggest one, the mo around it. That's good angling, isn't it? Codding mush. Don't get no more simple. When you're doing this fishing, it's all about speed. Quickly being able to replace your rigs. I don't make rigs at home. And that with a cam soft, that's just a four or five turn grinner. Like that can take an incredible amount of pressure and it ain't gonna give way because it never does. There was big weather coming up from the south, uh, up from Lyon. Um, and I could see that already there'd been some quite big squalls on the way up, but I didn't gamble for what happened next. These storms, they were unseasonable really. Midsummer storms, like oppressive, brutal heat for weeks on end means that sooner or later there's gonna be an almighty crash and something's gonna go bang. Lots of lightning, huge downpours. We're used to that in France. I go kitted up for that sort of thing. But what actually happened was, we were sat on the reservoir, the big weather rolled in, but of course, as it's coming up from Leon, Leon, if you drive from the Longres Plateau to Leon, it's downhill the whole way, the whole way, downhill. Dijon, Chalon, Macon, Leon, all the way down the motorway, downhill the whole way, the whole way. So you can imagine as this, this supercell came up from Leon, and it was a supercell, there's no two ways about that. As it came up onto higher ground, it morphed into a raging monster. That's the only way I can describe it. Uh, now, I've been in some really serious storms in France. Probably in over the 35 years I've fished there, probably I've had it half a dozen times that I've been in, in big storms. But this was certainly one of the scariest. Uh, was it any bigger than stuff I've been in before? I couldn't really tell you. But what I can tell you is it was brutal and it was quick. You know, it was one of them sort of storms that was that, like a tornado. Is as close as I can describe it. Um, I've watched lots of footage of big storms. I, you know, that sort of thing turns me on. I'm an angler, I'm an outdoorsman. Big weather is, is exciting. But this was exciting, and then it wasn't exciting. <laughs> it, it just built, it built, it came in. We had a bit of lightning the night before. I was laying in bed, lots of flashing on the horizon. And I thought, oh God, it can't come soon enough. Well, anyway, the next day we start to get a little bit of breeze. For, for the first time, I actually felt human again. I was like, like, pray, thank you, God, you've saved me from this. Literally like being in a hot pressure, like being in an oven, like an oven. That's the only way I can describe it. And when it started to break, of course, there's this incredible relief, isn't there? This, this like, like reborn feeling where like, thank you, God, you've saved us from ourselves, you know? And I, and I was really thankful and really excited like and cooling down, coolness, oh my God. And, and you're excited not just because of the coolness, because you know there's a bite coming. You know that there's going to be some bites. But then the storm hit us. It came in quick uh, and it came in so fast, like it caught us completely unawares. We had kit everywhere. Like it was all, you know, like Joe was set up down here, I'm set up here. We've got kit everywhere. We've got boilies laid out on our, on our looking mats trying to dry them and stuff. And this squall came across and it, and it, yeah, it took us by surprise. Even I was quite shocked by it. Um, and then I was quite scared by it. At one point, it was definitely sixpence half a crown moment. Like I was thinking, this is it. You know, I'm getting to the part. I've been, I've been in this position a couple of times where I had my cameras under in my arm in, in a bag and I had my, my passport. And like, all I knew was, right, <laughs> whatever else happens, like, the fishing tackle, I don't care what happens to that, it's of no consequence, I need to get myself to safety.
with everything to lose you can hear a pin drop filling up the room shadows in the sky running out of time drowning in the questions oh thank you god thank you Oh, mate, I can't tell you how good that feels. <whistles> After days of literally cooking in my own juices, <laughs> I'm now feeling like, ah, uh, ah, uh, now I can see why people get religious. Do you know what I mean? Thank you, Lord, thank you. I would have guessed for probably half an hour, we held on for dear life, for dear life. The kit was destroyed. We were really lucky we didn't lose all the camera kit in the aftermath. It was, the pressure drop was so savage, it forced, I know it sounds mental, and like afterwards you say it to people and they look at you like, madman, but like, I had Gore-Tex camera bags and, and the pressure drop and the water was so, the pre it was like being inside a pressure washer. That's the only way I can describe it. Afterwards, dry bags were opened and full of water. Everything soaked. Like, it was hard to explain just how ferocious that storm was. We were exposed as well. You've got to remember, on a reservoir, you've got nothing around you. Nothing to break it. There's no trees from the far bank breaking it, coming across. Like, we, we bore the brunt of it. Like, and we bought, <laughs> we definitely bore the brunt of it. But, all's well that ends well, we survived. And not only did we survive, we caught some amazing carp, so. Um, you can't be unhappy, can you? Aftermath of that. You what? The aftermath. I don't even know if this camera's working properly, mate. I'm very proud. That was honestly the most scared I've ever been um, on the bank, or probably ever, like in terms of like from just from the weather. I don't think the footage like fully sort of uh, does that justice. When the storm was at its worst, obviously there was nothing rolling. We were just hanging on for dear life, like onto everything that we could. I had so much kit with me that I was just concerned about. And yeah, I was just trying to hold down my shout. It was buckling around me. And luckily it was only the one camera that actually ended up getting a little bit damaged and eventually came back to life again. But definitely 110% the most scared I've ever been whilst fishing. Well, this, we've just finally put everything back together because all of that nearly got blown away when all that weather came in. Um, the decent camera, the Sony one, is um, being a bit temperamental at the moment, but that's probably where it got a little bit wet. Nick, looks like you're shivering there, mate. Yeah, I'm shivering. I might as well just lay in the lake, it'd be warmer. Ugh. Mate, I've just had driving hail and 80 mile an hour winds trying to kill me. It's doing like the others. Let's be winding back 200 yards. Oh. <clears throat> Only a little one. Can you throw me a net, please, Jay? <clears throat> One blew down here, mate. That's convenient. What, what? One of the nets blew its way down here. That's Did convenient. It? <laughs> it's a Got nothing in your pockets, mate, no? Got more weather coming in, mate. Thing we can do is turn that 
Do you want to do that? Yeah, I'll go do that now, mate. Plug it, turn it round, facing yeah, the van. Yeah. Um... All right, cool. It's more weather coming in over that way. Um, oh, I hope the footage is good on those cards because everything got battered, and I mean seriously battered. Like, yeah, the worst storm I've ever been out, and put it that way. And how me and Nick quite managed to hold everything together. Uh, yeah, and managed to juggle keeping up three shelters. We were running in between. I was running down to the boats, getting the boats in. Couldn't even see a like, hand in front of your face at one point. It was that bad with hell and stuff. Yeah, so it is a, a little bit scary, but we're here still. This camera's working. Um, but I'm going to get this shelter, turn it around the other way, because uh, typically it is battering right in here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get on with that. Rain or shine, he does not stop, quite literally. Just nearly died and he's still getting a rod out. Love it. Let's reposition ourselves slightly. Nothing can kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Woo! Tight. It's all that French wine, but this is coming in again now. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm telling this round because we're smart. It's already been. The next time it'll be gone. You know it, don't you? I wake up in the night, it'll be. Nick, Nick. What's the matter, Joe? It's all gone. It's all gone, bro. <laughs> I'll be like, well, you ain't getting in here with me. Improvise with the old TA cover up, Just keep a bit of rain off of it. It's only the camera kit that I'm worried about. If it starts blowing off, then I'll have to, uh... yeah, if it starts blowing away again, then I'll have to. Um... To be fair, this is nothing like not even a scratch on what it was like, so I'm sure that'd be more than that, uh, more than good enough. I'm not even convinced the bread's dry. Uh, uh, it's not dry, it's like f***ing rubber. I only wanted some bread to dry me out and so I could roll a fag. We've got nothing dry, like we've literally... Well, we're jubilant really, haven't we? We're happy to be alive. <laughs> yeah, no, to be fair, it, yeah. it was quite a rush, wasn't it? It was like, woo! Well, it was a rush for you, but I've been in them before, but, you know, that was pretty f***ing terrifying. Sorry. Oh, oh Joe's got one. No carps, no carps. <laughs> please, over, please over. no carp. Mine will go straight away again, you watch. Straight away. We'll just put a load of cod balls out there. Jab's like, don't go out in there, it's pretty rough, but like, it's gone through the storm now, and yeah, you know what's going to happen. It keeps feeling like it's building again, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it, that, that, that storm was a spiral. It was just like a torn, it sort of hit us and then ebbed away, didn't it? And then hit us again. Mm. We were really lucky, mate. There'd be lots of people killed in that storm. That was a ferocious beast of a thing. Like the, the, the hail, I've never seen clear hail. It's always white. This was clear, like marbles. I've never seen it ever, ever in my life. I've never even seen pictures of it or heard of it. So, like, it was a pretty savage, terrifying monster. Oh, we did manage to save the coals. Yeah, even though the bag's wet, the coals are... Yes. Like... So we can eat foods later. We need it. We deserve yeah, it. We're basically, we're going to be sitting under here, smoked out on a barbecue, trying to cook it. We're going to have nightmares. I might have to get with you tonight. That's all right, mate. I'll look after you. The long wind. Well, I had to go. As soon as the storm passed, I went went out in the big wind after. <laughs> I knew it'd go. Sure enough, it's gone. <laughs> and I can't get any wetter, neither can Joe, so I might as well just uh, keep going. And like all the others, how bizarre is this? Look, we just wind them back. They just come like a dog on a lead until they've had enough and then they go the other way.
not much of a fight, is it? It's a weird old game. Surely it's a roach or something, isn't it? Or a tench. It's got to be a carp. It's kiting, but it's just weird. Here he is, little f***. Smallest one, I reckon. Yeah, look, a little tiny thing. How bizarre. Little old common. Here you go, mate. Can you hold that? Sorry. I don't want to get my uh, camera wet, which is in my pocket. My camera is already wet. Yeah. He's old, mate. He's just tiny. Look at him. What a weird little carp. <laughs> a black eye, man. It's ancient. Show me this side again. It's about 100 years old. old. Right, sing. Look at him. Yeah, he's cool, isn't he? That's a funny little thing. Nice one. Another, another hour out in the boat to get the rod out. <laughs> Do you know what, mate? I think I'm going to call that a day. I've had plenty of bites. I think that was number 10 or number 9. But that's, that's good enough for me. What's that? Leaving it. Yeah, mate, I'm done. I've caught enough. My work is done. I'm soaked to the skin. I've got no wet, no dry clothes. I'm shaking. I'm tired. I'm a bit broken, which is rare for me, because I'm super. So I'm going to, uh, I don't know what we're going to have, something to eat, Joe, haven't we? Fry some food and then... Uh, Drink another bottle of wine and then go to bed. Not together, but we'll, you know, go to bed. Um, and that's going to be it till tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll be rejuvenated and back to our super normal cells and we're off to the next. Whatever. Where are we going next, Joe? Uh, we're heading north. We're heading yeah. north. Either, probably small weedy lakes, which made me think, yes, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, Joe a likes that. A bit more England, he's, he's a bit happier. <laughs> So we're going to uh, either end up on the river, something nice, some nice bit of the river Seine probably, and if not, I've got a few lakes to look at like on the way home. So, and if they fall through, I've always got a couple of others as well. So. I do uh, do love the fact that an hour ago, hour and a half ago, we were going home. Oh well, everything was done, mate, wasn't it? Everything soaked, and we've just sort of uh, accepted the fact that everything soaked. I'm just getting on with it. I've got one rod left out. Um, and to be honest with you, I'll probably want that. In. <laughs> I'm lucky. Times are tough, but our peckers are not down. It just goes to show, doesn't it? Minus 10 to a plus 10 with a little bit of hot food and a bottle of wine. And the world's not so sad. And hot sauce. Oh, yeah, got some Frank's hot sauce. <laughs> Is it even on the end, Joe? Yes. It, it, was, burned, it, it weren't in the end, it was it? fell off. Never mind, mate. We'll get up in the morning. Tomorrow's another day. Two attempts at landing one of these resi carp and both have failed miserably. <laughs> it won't fail tomorrow, mate. You'll have your carp tomorrow, don't worry. Good morning. From the battered camp. We are just about to pack up, or well, start packing up, but Nick wants to get a rod out first. Like I said, no stopping him. Oh! Go fishing to France with Nick for a week, they said. Go film him, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Yeah, right. Oh. Bit of a, an eventful night, so um, I actually got two wrong rods out myself into a, a good zone to catch a couple of fish, and um, Nick reeled easy in. And yeah, he wanted me to have one, and um, yeah, I've got a take uh, just on last light hook pull. Then I had another one at about half four this morning, and it took me around a buoy, and yeah, I lost that one as well. So. Not good. I actually had three bites from here whilst filming with Nick and I've lost all three of them. But at least he landed his. Um, we are going to pack up and get out of here because it is absolutely bogging.
the sun is our friend today. We've been uh, doing nothing but moan about it and now we need it. <laughs> Too much there, ready to load up. Nick's still got one rod fishing, but um, yeah, if nothing happens with that, so probably be the last bit of footage of this place. But yeah, what a cool place. I'll definitely be coming back at some point without Nick though. Would I go with Joe again? Of course I could. We're actually going really soon. We were meant to be going in December. Um, to a river in Europe, the floods have been terrible and like the meters per second is off the chart which just means it's not even worth bothering so we've rebooked a couple of times but we're actually going mid-January um, over to the east of Belgium to fish a couple of stretches like fed by the nuclear power stations I'm not going to ruin anyone's fishing there, it's well known about but from a vlog perspective and from people watching it should be really enjoyable Oh, quick restock all the essentials. Um, look at that. Honestly, it absolutely stinks. But we're at our next venue, or potentially our next venue is um, Nick's a little unsure because three lakes down on this little chain of lake, there's a guy fishing, so Nick's a bit scared now. Isn't that right, Nick? Not wrong. <laughs> Someone's fishing off him. Someone's someone's fishing off him. You try mug me off. I'll be going home. Mate, You'll drown be like me out under the water until you <laughs> shut up. Yeah, all right, mate. <laughs> no, it's a nice little lake. There's a geezer on the lake next door. Both these lakes are meant to have um, nice fifty pounders in, not just like big carp, but actually really nice ones. It's obviously been fished to death. Right? It's uh, crystal clear, seriously weedy. Um, but yeah, there's a chain of lakes that run all along down the side of that road, so uh, plenty of water here, not many anglers. I'll leave it up to the boss and see what he's saying. My wants and needs and all that are different to most people, it seems. If I was younger again, yeah, of course I want the big social and to meet some German anglers and done, we'll all be great friends and you know, they'll come over here and I'll go over there. I don't want that anymore. I just want to go bloody fishing on my own and enjoy it for what it is. Because of that, when I do turn up to water, if there's any sign of carp anglers, I'm back in the car and gone because that's not what I want for myself. I want to be able to wake up on a big lake, whether it's a busy carp fished lake or not, I don't know that. If I wake up and it's empty, it's mine, isn't it? It's mine. And that's the importance of a bit of freedom and a bit of space and a bit of adventure in a world where you're not allowed to do any of those things, it seems anymore, like it becomes even more important to the, the theme, you know, no anglers, very important. Well, there's a geezer over there with a bait boat. So Nick doesn't want to fish here. No, you know what's <laughs> going to happen. No so chance. we've got an hour's drive now to a canal. Probably going to get there for what? Six. Six o'clock. So we better uh, get on our toes. Another drive. Um, and yeah, don't think we're feeling this. Um, it looks lovely, but there is a lot of drifting weed and it's coming through quite quick. Um, so yeah, it's probably... We've had a really long day, like a really long day. We're already beaten last night went to bed wet got up put wet clothes on um packed up loads of wet gear in sticky mud um i'd actually got a fish it dummy around the boy last night about half four in the morning um so that was uh, an hour fanning around with that and then obviously today's been just driving from lake to canal to canal to lake back to a canal um and yeah and we're sort of struggling for ideas at the moment but Nick's down there on the phone trying to hook us up something for tomorrow potentially um, which could be quite cool bit bit relaxed um, but yeah this spot does not look like it's going to be the one for us tonight but um, we'll see see what the boss is saying and um, we are on what is largely at parts of the river Somme which is, uh, they call it Marais in France. So it's basically, rather than a flowing piece of river, it's like a wetland. Mm -hmm. like, and there are tens of thousands of acres of it. And it looks like a carp angler's dream, doesn't it? But most of it's real shallow, like this sort of depth. And I've seen carp, you know, when I've stopped and had a little look at that. And just, you know, let's fish there now, like under the, just saw the swirl under the, under, a, under the end of that tree. Let's see the pickles. But the, you know, there is carp in here, mate. Make no mistake. And it's so beautiful. 
really is beautiful, all of it, but it's mozzy. F hell. Nearly got killed by the last one. Let's have a little look over here then, Nick. Yeah, really. nice, yeah. and this is not like a, like a fish one, this is just a town. See how deep they are? Yeah. What a. Christ. I am I ain't going across that. No chance. Mind you, why do you need a bridge? You can just walk across it. Yeah, these are cool. Yeah. Can we not do a night on one of these? You could do a night on them, mate, but you never get a drop. <laughs> Driving off into the sunset to our next destination. Hopefully try and get there before it gets dark. What's the chances, Nick? 50-50. Were you driving? Probably 60-40. Nothing wrong with my driving, mate. We're here then. Looks good, doesn't it? I think it does. We're ripping in here. That. Look at that. But this is where we're going to spend tonight. Yeah, it's a big pit, but it's looking real good for us. It's blowing right in here. Incredible. I just hope there's no rain coming with it because I'm trying to dry stuff out. But we'll see. Finally, we settled somewhere. Unloading. It's nearly 10 o'clock. We've not even had any dinner yet. So these will do for now. So good. And he's still going. No rest of the week. Look, you don't, you don't turn up at somewhere like this, rocking the first swim, the wind's smashing in here, it's super mild, and I can smell the f on the wind, do you know what I mean? Right. We've been to a few places today, but that's the nature of the beast, you know, we went somewhere, bloke there with a bait boat, you know what's coming next, so we're off. Bloke on the other lake next door, too small for us to go on there as well, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that. And, um, where did we go after that show? We've been to a few places, haven't we? We have, mate. But a few bits of canal that didn't look the part. There was a lot, again, like, like the River Yon the other day, the canal we went to was absolutely f***ing through with lots of weed. Um, and yeah, we could have stopped there for the night and a lovely night and a barbecue and a bottle of wine and it's silent there, apart from the owls and the nightingales. It's magnificent. But it's another waste of another night and like we haven't got a lot of nights and we've wasted a couple already. Or not wasted, nothing's ever wasted. but. You know, we've had a couple of, of uh, quiet nights, places really we shouldn't, maybe shouldn't have stayed or passed on. So, well, you know, gift horse in the mouth sort of thing. Using this uh, this wind to my advantage, because look, it's soaked. But, um, yeah, just got bits out here drying. Mother nature. Got it all soaked, and now she's got to help me dry it. In the great storm of 2022. Squeaking ever since the great storm. <laughs> There's ants in my cat. Do you know what? It's such good weather. We turned up here last night, banging whatever it was. I was buzzing. We were both knackered in the van, couldn't be bothered to do anything else, should we just put the beds out and go to sleep? Well, that's the trap of the, f***ing, the adventurous angler, isn't it? Like, if you ain't careful, you wipe yourself out and end up having to sleep in a bloody car park. But as soon as we were out of the van, it was super warm and like, we were all G'd up. And then by half 12, we're sitting there drinking wine, laughing and chuckling with two rods out each. So, you know, the, the crack is, you just got to keep going, isn't you? Um, but this morning, I'm sure we'll see some here. It's a big lake with some really big carp in. Oh, there's matey walking out there. What's he walking out for? Has he got one or is he uh, casting? I'd say he's probably got one. No, he's casting. Uh, 
was a great trip um, and it was lovely, really lovely at the end because we both suffered a bit um, to go to Wesley's and have a few beers and a, you know, a big takeaway from the chip shop and a, and a lovely time for a night. We are here. But you can guess where we are. My tackle's destroyed, man. Everything's wet. When I get home, I'm going to have to dump it all and start again. All my hooks will go rusty. Look, every single packet of hooks is soaked. This is it. This is what Nick has set me up with for the last night. I'm going to actually fish properly tonight, get the rods out, cock on. Nick's going to tie me a couple of rigs. Win-win. <laughs> right, there's my kit. Let's get it on. <laughs> so tw so tw Twitchy. Come here, look. I'm laying down now. Surely you can't be scared of me now. Come on, I've got to take my hat off. What is it, my glasses? Come on. Come on. Come on, we could be friends. We could be friends. Or is it the camera? Do you not like the camera? <laughs> He's going to sneak up behind me and grab me by the, no, grab me by the throat. <laughs> Don't be on it. Don't be weeing on it. Come here. Come on. Oh, you, you literally have, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> Just uh, get, get, get on me bloody. <laughs> well, the hot air balloons are up as well, look. It's going to be one of them evenings. Behind you. <laughs> Looking over the fence. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's miles away. I don't even know yeah, if you can see that. Way, I weren't going to fish. But Joe's like, it'd be lovely if we had a picture like one each in the morning. I was like, yeah, it would. But I've got a bad back, and that's a long way in a facing wind, and you've got to get, you know, it's one of these lakes you need to get a bit of bait around them, otherwise it ain't going. So I said he'd help. And then I said, well, Joe will help. He's a big, strong lad, do you know what I mean? So help basically, I've got to spawn your bait out tonight. Help the old boy out. You said you were giving me the night off. No, I, mate, you don't have to help me spawn. I'm me joking. And me and Wes will do it after. No, I like it. I find it quite therapeutic, mate. Yeah, well, there you go. You can, you do it then. I'll, I'll clap you. <laughs> <laughs> Nick has left me here, guarding the gear. While he uh, runs to go get our dinner, which I'm uh, quite looking forward to. But yeah, the boats have gone in. I'm going to flick some rods out further. I think Nick's going to get his rods out when he gets back. Um, and I've got a spot his bait out for him, so um, yeah, look, really looking forward to that. But yeah, I'm going to get my rods out a bit further, and uh, it's been a mega trip regardless, but if we could end it with a cheeky little brace shot in the morning, that'd be mega, but um, yeah, either way, I've loved it, although I'm looking forward to my bed, like seriously. That trip's definitely been uh, a highlight for me since I've been, been at TA. No matter how uncomfortable, how tired, the fact that we get to go to these places with the guys that we get to go to and with and call it work, 
it's uh, yeah, you just can't grumble, can you? Nick's got me spamming bait out for him later, and he's got someone else screwing his weed for him. We, we clear. Like always. <laughs> As always, yeah, I hear it all the time. <laughs> That's when, that's when you know you made it, kids. Shut your mouth. that time of day mate. Wesley said mornings. Sure enough, morning. <laughs> oh, first, one. first one mate. <laughs> They're jumping in the swimming pool like mad. <laughs> petit, petit, petit. He's out. Where's have you got any sugar? sugar. For my coffee. <laughs> this is the time I have to cut the logs into beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's nice. Oh, that's a nice one. All much bigger than I thought. I thought it was going to be a little common. But oh no. It's a 40 pounder. <laughs> it is at all. Oh, oh, sorry, mate. I'm pulling over. I'm pulling over. I've cut still. That's a big grey one, though. Oh, Nick's having a lovely time. Oh, it's a 44 pounder. Ooh. Yeah, it's a 20 kilo one. Yeah. I am so jammy. I <laughs> said, yeah. Oh mate, I want a Joe to catch one and then a me catch one and have one each. I was hoping that was your one, Joe. Sorry, mate. You don't get many of them to the pound, me old China. Look at the size of that bugger. He's a real big one. Wicked. Lovely morning wake up call. He's very, very large, isn't he? Ooh, superb. See? It's always on the head 44. 50 kilos. On the nose. On the nose, is it? On the nose. Wicked, 44 pounder, no, I'll take yeah, it. On the nose. Nice one, mate. It's always 20, 98. Last time I 20, caught it, it 20, was there. 20.1. Oh, he's such a difficult carp to yeah, hold. Yeah. <laughs> and he's bang on, bang on, 20 kilos, 44 pound. And you've got to be happy with that on the last morning of your trip, ain't ya? Nice one, Wes. Nice Cheers, one, Joe. Mate. I've had a great week. It's been awesome. We've had a load of great carp, some ups and downs, and some near-death experiences, some drunken nights, and some quiet ones. And there you go. Lovely times. Cheers, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, isn't he? What a nice morning. Lovely. Cheers, mate.